Coker on item 17. We will now move to item 3, public participation. So I'd ask Storm McVeigh to come to the thing, please. Uh, it's five minutes, and um, we'll, we'll time it, obviously. And we're going. Storm was going to talk about the democratic process and not relitigate some other things that we were that we have done in the past. Thank you. Yes, what I want to talk about today is democracy, defined as government by the people, especially the rule of the majority. It is bad enough that Christchurch City Council staff think they can plough ahead and squander hard-earned rates on unnecessary and pointless traffic changes without any consultation whatsoever. What is worse... Yes, Councillor Templeton. That's my personal opinion, and I'm entitled to, to express it. So we can't hear the councillor, Templeton. So you can restrict a public forum speaker if they're criticising staff. Please keep an eye on do not criticise staff, please. I won't go beyond expressing my personal opinion. What is worse is when they are finally forced to consult, they completely disregard the views of the majority and manipulate and misrepresent the data to support their Point own of position. Order. <laughs> yes, I have Councillor Templeton. Uh, the public forum person has uh, been disrespectful of staff by accusing them of manipulating the information. Um, staff didn't make a decision. They took it to the community board and made that decision. I have specific comments to connect to this okay, just that are factual. Carry so, on being respectful, thank you. please. Thank you. The actual result of this survey, before the spin starts at page two, is that, the, that a majority of 45% of all respondents consider the changes made to Park Terrace have made it worse. In numbers, that is 15 times the majority by which Pauline Cotter hangs by a thread as a councillor of this city. The worst thing is that this marginal councillor, that's a fact, eight, eight votes is a marginal majority. Please. And you. others of her That's got nothing to do with it. Sky, uh, um, Storm, please just wait. Can you please not refrain from naming councillors, please? Right. Carry on. And others of her ilk are prepared, indeed determined, to completely disregard the view of the majority and vilify those who stand up to Point be counted. Point of order. She is saying that councillors are vilifying members I've of got, the... If you would stop interrupting me and listen, you would hear what I have to Point say. Point of order. It's up to the chair to control this meeting, not the submitter. Thank you very much. Please show respect. Carry on. Such as... Well, it's a pity that respect wasn't shown for others, such as Ellie Jones at the Papua Nui Community Board meeting. This, in my opinion, arrogance and ignorance is nothing short of a subjugation of the democratic process itself. To those councillors who have and continue to ignore the majority, there is only one question for you. Do you have any integrity or not? No. It is not too late to become ethical. It is not only Christchurch City Council staff who need to be subjected to scrutiny and held accountable. It is those councillors who sit around this table who support this anti-democratic process and agenda. Happily, that is not difficult. A majority of eight votes will be hard to hold after a track record of flagrant disregard of the majority views. Thank you very much. Okay. So now we have Richard, please, can I see him? Thank you, Richard. Richard's going to talk about the challenges faced by investors in the city. Welcome. Mr Chair, is it worth getting the other councillors back now that the person that they didn't want to listen to is gone? Or? Oh, go on. Thank you. Or are they gone for the day? Or? No, we wait till they come back. <coughs> um, not sure. If they want to come back, they will. Carry I'd on. I want them to come back. Uh, carry on, please, Richard. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> um, well, my name's Richard Peebles. I, basically, I don't want to be here. Um, my only purpose and goal is to share my concerns 
about the CBD, and that concern is shared by many others. A lot of the guys that are involved with the CBD rebuild have the, my same concerns. You know, the confidence we have in this in the City Council has been undermined recently. Um, as investors, um, we need certainty. You know, we did have a central city, uh, sorry, accessible city plan, um, and apparently that is doesn't carry any weight anymore. But um, there's constant changes to road layouts which don't align with the accessible city plan, changes that recently are proposed or undertaken without consultation, without owners or public input. Um, much of my contact with the council at an operational level, not at a senior level, so you guys don't take offence, is really negative. You know, you get rates increases. We get enforcement teams down at Riverside regularly for signs, car parking, liquor licensing reviews. It's just constant, constant negative interaction with council. Recently, Riverside was vote. It was um, the Australian mag uh, sorry newspaper voted Riverside as one of the top ten food markets in the world. But we feel under constant threat and attack from the council. It's it's just ongoing, you know, and that's that's very very frustrating. But that's not our major concern. Our biggest concern is access changes to the CBD. As look, we support totally any changes to make it easier for all forms of transport and everyone to get in the CBD, and we vehemently oppose any changes that make it more difficult. That's a, that's our simple position. Now, recent changes to Gloucester Street um, and the other street that I can't mention, without consultation of public input, <coughs> has um, has made it more difficult to navigate or get into or out of the central city. Recently, I built a building corner Gloucester Street and Manchester Street. I would never build on Manchester Street because basically if you get three cars, one cat and a dog, it's congested for 15 minutes. But because it was on Gloucester Street, I, I went ahead. Three years had limbs, pims, building consents, resource consents. Not once was it mentioned that there was proposed road change out. After it was completed, we had leased it. I got an email saying, would you like to see the proposed changes? I said, yes, I'm back on this date. And then they said they're starting on the Monday. And they were changing the road from two way to one way, slow road, 10 kilometres there. Had not a mention. I spoke to people in New Regent Street. I spoke to other property owners. Mr Carter, he's building up a proposed hotel. Never mentioned it. How can, as investors and developers, can we be expected to invest many millions of dollars when people are doing these unilateral changes to city streets? It is just impossible. There is no certainty. Um, <coughs> The other street that I can't mention, you know, I, all I'm going to say, there is an opportunity to do a dedicated off-street cycleway. Sorry. That, and, for uh, some reason, that, was, that position passion. wasn't taken. Yeah, don't, please don't mention it. Thank talk you. about a... <coughs> all right, OK. Um, all these changes have actually made congestion worse. They have worsened greenhouse gas emissions, and anyone that claims that doing these changes is helping greenhouse gas emissions, it's, it's, just, it's, it's just not true. It's disingenuous. It's just not true. You can't slow down 95% of the um, commuters and buses and claim that you're helping greenhouse gas emissions. So you need to get off your high horse in regards to suggesting that's the reason you're doing these things. It's not true. Um, the worst thing is, councillors, is by allowing and endorsing what... What I seem to be as a, as a department that seems to go ahead and do these changes without prior approval, you are, you are ceding the power and the delegation to them. So you're rubber stamping or attempting to rubber stamp work that was previously done after I read things without prior approval. Is, is that what we're doing here? Um, this is a major issue. Confidence for many of the investors is really low. You know, I've got properties, and I know Mr Carter is rethinking his development plans. You know, if, if we're deciding that we want a car-free city and a car park-free city, let's have that discussion and let's just let those people... So we have certainty, we know what's going to be proposed, and then we will decide whether we will invest or not. We need to know that. Let's not have the death by a thousand cuts. Let's understand what the road layout is and what it's going to be for the next 10 or 20 years. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Richard, for putting that across. Thank you. Now, I'm just going to adjourn for a little bit and pop outside for a...